Thank you, Senator Canavan. Senator Dastiari. Uh, thank you, Mr Acting Deputy President. Uh, I'll begin by um, uh, thanking uh, Senator Canavan for, for his contribution in, in this debate. Uh, clearly, he comes at it from a position where these are matters that he's thought about, uh, that he's worked on, and, uh, and he brings a level of, uh, uh, of experience and thought to the debate. Uh, in some areas, I agree with him. Uh, in others, I disagree. Um, it was also fantastic to learn tonight that Senator Canavan has actually read a, a, a book recently, and I think that sharing that contribution was uh, an especially meaningful one. Um, look, I'm, um, I'm, I'm quite sympathetic uh, to this uh, motion, um, but uh, I, I won't be supporting it, and I kind of wanted to, to explain, and the Labor Party won't be supporting it. The, the premise of what's being proposed here uh, by Senator Wish Wilson is actually a very, very interesting idea and interesting debate. And it's really raising two issues. Firstly, that if we are going to have the level of social services, uh, of the welfare system, um, of um, social um, goods that we want to have as a society, who should be paying for it and where should the pain be shared? That's the first question that's being raised. And the second question is, do the banks themselves also have a greater responsibility to contribute um, to the economic finances of the nation, considering that we have moved, whether we want to admit it or not, to a model where we accept that if their banking system is in trouble, that we will be getting involved, we will be intervening, we will be taking whatever relevant steps it is to protect the banking sector. And this idea of too big to fail uh, and I think what Senator Wish Wilson was saying in his remarks was, well, you know, it's a whole separate debate about too big to fail, uh, about where, what the role of government should be, about where government should or shouldn't be involved in, uh, in propping up these kinds of institutions. But largely, as a society, we've made a decision, uh, an economic decision, a social decision, that we don't want a banking sector that can fail. Uh, and as a result, when these difficult decisions need to be made, there's a tendency of government to make these decisions. And if the big banks uh, and the banking sector is going to get the benefit of being able to rely on government in difficult periods to shore up their, their risk profile uh, as an institution, then at what point should they also have a responsibility during the good times to provo be providing more? Where I think uh, I, I don't support the motion uh, isn't because I don't think it's an interesting idea. Uh, isn't because I don't think that uh, there isn't some merit to having this debate. I think there's certainly merit to having this debate. It's just the idea that, that making that bridge at this point in time without the careful consideration that still needs to be undertaken between at what point do you actually move towards a system where you are looking at a greater taxation or, or levy or charge system uh, on, the, on the banks and how that gets used to pay for you know, um, um, uh, uh, other means. But I do have to say I agree with Senator Wish Wilson, and I do agree with the Greens, uh, on the point that Senator Wish Wilson was making about the other government's twisted priorities, which have been on full display, full display in this budget. They are unfair, unjust, and often unbelievable demonstration of a corrosive ideological crusade to punish the poor, the unemployed, pensioners, students, the sick and families. And this week we saw another attack and an attack on superannuation. And they've decided to turn on both hard-working Australians and employed Australians. And, and we even found out this week even the children of war veterans uh, will be hit. Senator Canavan was trying to draw a, some inferences uh, between how the Labor Party, uh, when we were in government, uh, dealt with these uh, kinds of matters when it came to uh, banking and, uh, and taxation and um, uh, uh, the placing of levies and tried to present themselves as, as if there's been some calm, sensible, rational process the government had been following. Well, let's just be clear. In the banking sector, uh, in when it comes to reform, you know, we sat here in this chamber and watched in a period of one hour a deal that was done when it comes to regulation, when it comes to the provision of financial advice, where in a, in a spectacularly embarrassing move, where Clive Palmer, uh, sorry, Mr. the member for Fairfax from the other place, 
sits in the public gallery and watches the minister read a letter, the minister read a letter that had been signed minutes earlier as part of a deal that had been done in a hallway outside, and somehow we're being told that that's how we should be doing policy, that's how we should be doing banking reform, that somehow that this government has this incredible uh, history and ability. Why? Because they've palmed off what is a series of difficult decisions to one review being led by David uh, Murray and are now being able to say that no issue, uh, no idea, that all we're going to do is we're going to sit back and wait, we're going to wait for the report and we all know what's going to happen. They'll get the report, they'll sit on that for another three, four months, maybe even a year. They'll leak out little bits of it that they want to leak out and then at the end, um, and, and at the end they'll uh, uh, adopt a very, very small part of it. And, and frankly, you know, uh, I share the concerns that uh, I know Senator Wish Wilson's aired in other places and in this place and others, that the entire review process as it's currently being conducted uh, really have to question whether um, uh, David Murray was the appropriate person to actually be placed to head that kind of an inquiry. You know, when you have the CEO, the current CEO of the Commonwealth Bank uh, in Narev, uh, turn around and say that in his opinion and in the opinion of the bank, and in the opinion of their lawyers, the financial misconduct that happened in Commonwealth financial planning goes back, goes back to when Mr Murray was CEO of the bank. And then we turn around and say, well, the person who's actually going to be conducting the review in the financial systems inquiry is actually a person who's the bank of which he ran themselves believe improper actions began while he was running the bank. And I know Senator Wish Wilson's made these comments uh, previously, and I, I, I echo some of those sentiments that really you have to ask and question whether this was the appropriate system and the appropriate pathway. And look, it's not as if you know, uh, the, um, you know, the, the banking sector in Australia should be congratulated on having a very, very successful year, and no one should begrudge them for that. I've been heavily involved in public inquiries into the conduct of Australia's big banks. I'm on the public record delivering some heavy criticism of their behaviour. And I expect with a new inquiry that's just been begun, I'll probably have some more to say about this in coming time. But I think the, uh, a public insurance levy at this point in time isn't the right way to handle some of these concerns. The banks themselves, and again, no one should begrudge them for their profitability. You know, last year we were talking a figure of around $29 billion. Uh, but, but that doesn't mean and while my criticism of them isn't that they've been incredibly profitable, they have a right to be profitable, we want them to be profitable, we want them to be strong. But the behaviour of some areas and sections of the Australian banking sector is deplorable. You know, there was, there's been willful ignorance and malpractice. You know, admissions of wrongdoing that we sat through in inquiry hearings where the Commonwealth Bank came, came to the inquiry and, and, and lied. They lied about what had happened. They covered it up. Now, they'll claim they didn't know, they'll claim evidence got changed. But frankly, you have to ask yourself a question. Either they didn't know what was going on within their own organisation, or they were lying and got caught. And frankly, they're both horrible. They're both horrible. You know, you've got a situation where you have other banks um, that have been, you know, and again, I don't want to get into the business of, of, of naming them all, but you have other banks that have for too long allowed some really horrible practices in financial planning, where, where, you know, done in a vertically integrated model, uh, but also uh, propped up, supported, uh, bankrolled a handful of crooks, criminals and con men who have been uh, pushing products that I, I feel in a lot of instances the banks themselves knew, knew weren't good products, knew were damaging knew that were at high risk. And they knew this because they priced it themselves at 18 to 22% in some uh, spaces, in some areas, and then turn around. Uh, and then uh, and once these financial planners and them all kind of vanish and collapse, and some of them went to, to, to jail and other places, uh, some of them were able to bulletproof themselves, to start calling in some debts that frankly uh, should never have been provided in the first place. And frankly, the banks in many instances, well, they may have not committed any crime, and legally they acted in, in many cases well within the law, and I'm not making accusation they didn't, but that doesn't make the behaviour conscionable when they knowingly knew they were putting people in many cases in a position at such high risk through uh, financial planners that they themselves um, knew, 
knew what the type of people that they should be doing these uh, kinds of actions. And now you've got you know the CBA uh, open review process. Now you know, we're looking at something in the area of 400,000 customers. So I share the concerns that others have. They go, well, hang on. You've got a sector here that has been massively protected by government. That the government itself has taken really strong action when they were in their difficult time to make sure. And look, obviously they did it no, um, for, for the public good, and, and, but, but, but has got that kind of level of protection. And at the same time, this debate that, well, hang on, at what point then, if they're going to be the beneficiary of public good, what is the responsibility of the banking sector? What is their responsibility? And what is their responsibility when it comes to contributing to um, uh, Australian society? Now, Labor's got a strong record of sensibly regulating the banking and financial sectors. We're highly proud uh, of, of broad public consultations that we conducted with financial experts, academics, lawyers and consumer groups, and of course the banks and financial service providers, uh, you know, to actually put together what was our big package of reforms in, 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 in some of the banking space about the future of financial advice reforms, which of course, as we all know, uh, in coming weeks we're going to have a, a large debate in this place as legislation tries to be passed to repeal it. But the government's changes to Labor's financial advice reforms um, uh, essentially were, were essential consumer protections. But what the government's now doing, by watering down the best interest duty, by removing the opt-in provision, by scrapping annual fee disclosure statements, and allowing for the return of previously banned forms of conflicted remuneration, um, is really worrying. It's worrying. And it's worrying when you go and when you start realising that again we're talking about a sector here that of course the banking sector has done in some areas and some parts of it uh, have made in the financial services uh, community. There are elements of it that have argued for as minimal regulation as possible. But, but one person's regulations and another person's protections. And while there are sections of the banking sector and the financial sector that have argued against it, uh, and consistently argued against it, um, it, it, it makes it even more deplorable when you realise this is the same sector, and especially in the space of the banks, who have massively benefited from the protections that were provided to them by the global, uh, during the global financial crisis. So we'll have the debate uh, about the financial planning advice. We'll have the debate about those reforms. But what Senator Wish Wilson is proposing in his, his motion today goes to a somewhat different space, and that is, uh, is there a greater role when it comes to uh, the banking sector putting more money in? Should that be placed in some kind of a levy uh, for a rainy day fund, as, as Senator Canavan was referring to? Or should that money, or can that money be actually spent by government uh, and be used in? I think that's a fine debate to have. I think that's a healthy debate to have. I think it's a debate that we should be having and that more people should be participating in that debate. I don't believe we're in a position right here, right now, to predetermine that kind of a debate and saying, yes, that is the pathway we should be going. I think we should be having contributions. I think we should be hearing what people have to say. I was interested to hear uh, some of the figures that um, were being quoted by Senator Wish Wilson, and I think if the opportunity arises to place them uh, on the public record, uh, I think that that would be a, um, an appropriate place to do it. Um, I think using the Senate committee process over time to explore some of these ideas in more detail would be a very, very appropriate place to be having some of these conversations, to having some of these debates, to being able to nut out some of these figures. And I don't think it's unhealthy for us to be able to ask the question, at what point, at what level, should there be a greater burden on the banking sector? How do you create that in a way that isn't just going to be passed on to Australian consumers? Uh, we don't want a situation where you're, you're simply creating a levy or a form of kind of taxation in, in one way or another that simply ends up being passed down the line to, uh, to consumers. Uh, uh, and so I think it's, it's very, very healthy for us to have that uh, discussion and, and to hear the different views. And I'm sure the Australian Banking Association and others will come and, and they'll have very, very strong views on this uh, in which they're entitled to have and the banks will have strong views on this. Uh, and I think that will be a more appropriate path for us to be able to have a detailed discussion about this than simply saying that at this point in this time uh, that the Australian Senate is of one particular opinion because the truth is we're not, part, we're not of that opinion yet. The Senate is not yet of that opinion 
but that doesn't mean that we can't debate it, uh, that we can't share some views. So, uh, in concluding, uh, I, I do want to say that uh, I firstly share the concerns that were raised. I think it's an interesting debate to have to say that if we do as a society want to have all these social programs, there is going to naturally be a question about who pays for it and how that's paid for. And should we, within that debate, have a look at the Australian banking sector, a sector that's particularly benefited from the goodwill of government uh, over the years? Uh, I don't necessarily agree with, I think what Senator Canavan was saying earlier about the role of APRA, about prudential standards, is an important one. And we have an incredible system of, of uh, and our prudential regulators uh, uh, do a fantastic job. Um, and, um, and I think that's uh, good. But that doesn't negate the fact that when bad international events happen, uh, when, uh, when we start moving towards very, very difficult environments, that there still will be a role of government to step in. There still will be a role of government to actually, uh, as, as consistently being shown, to actually do what it can do to protect the Australian banking sector. And if that is something that's now being priced in, uh, to the risk that's associated with those the Australian banking sector, then frankly uh, there may be a greater responsibility for the banking sector to financially contribute to pay for it. Now I've been making a slightly different point that also gives them a greater responsibility as it comes to, 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 to how they uh, behave as, as corporate citizens and, and the extent to which uh, things like financial advice, uh, financial advice reforms, how they do their financial planning and the role that banks play and have consistently played in propping up some, some questionable financial uh, uh, planners uh, is related. Uh, so uh, in conclusion, Mr Acting Deputy President, I don't believe that now is the time, uh, now is the place, now is the right environment to be making the kind of declarative statements that this, um, that this uh, motion seeks to do, but that doesn't mean there isn't a greater role for the Australian banking sector, and it certainly doesn't mean there isn't a role for the Senate to be scrutinising these ideas, to be participating in this debate, and to be presenting alternate views. Thank, Thank you, you, Senator Dastiari. Senator Milne.